Hello, good morning and welcome to Thoughts and Updates. And I'm here um, in the Glasgow Green this morning, having spent the last couple of weeks going around looking at various statues. Um, I thought I'd come to a place where there's a distinct positive beauty in the way in which some things have been used. And what I've got right there is the Henry Dalton uh, Fountain, which was moved here in 2005. It was erected in 1888 for the International Exhibition donated to the city. It was moved here because it was in a very bad state of repair. Um, it's a, a, a fantastic example. It's 14 metres high. It is the largest terracotta fountain in the world. And uh, with typical Glaswegian swagger, it is an amazing example of the craftsmanship uh, from students at the Lambeth School down in London who put it together um, for Sir Henry Dalton, not that he ever uh, designed it. But at the apex, at the very top of it, is Queen Victoria, and underneath we have images of India, South Africa, Canada and Australia, where um, it was based on the empire. And the idea was that Queen Victoria, wherever it was originally going to sit, would be looking towards the courthouse in Glasgow, um, looking down upon the judiciary as she was the monarch of that time. Now, the International Exhibition attracted an amazing 5.7 million visitors at the late 19th century, which is just astonishing, considering now that's more or less the uh, number of people who live in Scotland. Um, going back well over a century, that is quite remarkable. But, of course, it's dedicated to empire. Um, and although it is the greatest example of a terracotta fountain in the world, it still represents something which we should keep in mind, a uh, period of history that increasingly we are discovering was not something of which to be particularly proud. But it sits in a, a sort of triangular pattern with a number of things. What you can see there is the Templeton Carpet Factory, which is no longer a carpet factory because the industrialization of this particularly magnificent city is now gone. But a series of office suites, I think there's a pub as well at the bottom, and I think also some flats. But even more magnificent is this museum here, Glasgow's People Palace. The People's Palace was dedicated to the history of the people of Glasgow. It's one of Glasgow's free museums, which means that you can go in there and it costs you nothing. It's looked after by our taxes, it's looked after by the local city council. And it means that what we have is we have our culture and our heritage preserved in a place which is also very historically important. Um, and behind me is the large Glasgow Green, which way back uh, 50, 60 years ago, used to be at this time of a Sunday morning, just absolutely filled, I understand, with lots and lots of washing. There would be wash houses dotted around Glasgow Green that the women of Glasgow would go to in order to wash their clothes and in order to dry them they would be hung out on Glasgow Green and there would be masses and masses of washing in the morning where um, I think it was one night it was Edmund Morgan, I may be a wrong Scottish poet of note, who talked about the dancing that a child would see on a Sunday morning and it wasn't people, it was the clothes of the people of Glasgow on washing lines. So here I am this morning um, in the shadow of a fountain uh, dedicated to something that we don't necessarily see as being particularly good for our heritage but something that reminds us that that's exactly where we were and it's escaped any kind of attention over the recent uh, issues uh, in terms of Black Lives Matter. It's been a great week. Can I also say hello to all of the American and Canadian people who have got in touch through Twitter. It's been an explosion thanks to Ringside Report and Brad, uh, Bad Brad Berkut, the publisher and CEO of Ringside Report, where a number of people are getting in touch, retweeting, liking, commenting upon articles that are going up in order to help the cause of Joe Biden. Um, and whilst it may be argued that some of us are in there, not because we think Joe Biden is the most amazing uh, politician ever, but because the alternate sitting in the White House at the moment is just too bad to contemplate, but he's there. And I wrote this week for Ringside Report a little 
piece on how Joe Biden had in April of this year told everybody that there was a possibility that Donald Trump would attempt to call the election corrupt and try and remain in office and that has happened and I've looked back at the elections that in my lifetime, Enver Hoxha, Ceausescu in Romania, um, even now in North Korea and China, uh, going back to the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. According to Trump, these weren't the worst, but an, an election that's not even happened is going to be the worst. And then this morning, he has decided to have an attack on scientific experts over the coronavirus, um, Dr. Anthony Fauci, who has said that the reason why America is currently struggling is because you didn't shut down the economy and you've got one simple word in a tweet, wrong, in capital letters, from Donald J. Trump. You're an idiot, man. But we know that. But he's an elected official. He managed to get more collegiate votes than Hillary Clinton. It's not long before we find out whether or not that is a permanent state of affairs, at least for another four years. I also wrote this week, um, taking Donald Trump in my scurrilous little article that pokes fun at him, and I'm taking a test because one of his security, his national security advisor, managed to Richard O'Brien uh, test positive for coronavirus, um, and of course, testing is something that Mr. Trump seems to not like. Also writing this week, I've had uh, an opportunity to write for the Scottish Football Supporters Association, looking at the suspicious minds that have come from the court, recent court case and shenanigans at the Scottish Professional Football League, suggesting that it is important for us all to remember that we should learn from our mistakes. And if one thing is not happening at the moment in football in Scotland, it is nobody's learning from any mistakes. We keep making the same mistake. About a quarter of the Scottish Professional Football League have been adversely affected by decisions specifically made by the SPFL, a member's organisation. How is it possible that a quarter of your membership are going to be attacked by the organisation to which it belongs? It doesn't make a lot of sense. I also took Mr Neil Doncaster and put him in Mount Olympus in order to look at why his uh, approach is one when he talked of Herculean efforts. It might not actually be Herculean efforts, certainly not on his watch. Writing as well, I watched uh, some of the boxing last night. Going back to the old boxing and Ted Cheeseman versus Sam Eggington. What a fantastic fight that was. Now, without giving away what the outcome was, one got their career back on track, the other has added to the losses that he has sustained, but it was a slugfest. It was an absolute joy to watch, but a, a, a through your eye, through your fingers kind of watch, really, really tough. Eddie Hearn and Matt Schrimmer back with it being in the outdoors, what a risk to take in the United Kingdom, particularly given the recent weather, but he's taken it an all credit to him and it seems to have turned up trumps if I may use that pardon me phrase in a positive way and it's interesting he talked about we've had the bubble we've had the studios bubbles in America with Bob Arum the studios with Frank Warren in London with BT and now he has outdoor and it's right it's right to have something very very different and that's fantastic I've reviewed or at least been part of uh, Magic Gareth yesterday, a uh, performance uh, online by a magician, a Scottish magician, who was just fantastic, it was great, and it was good to see the way, again, in which creative people have adapted and developed their responses to the loss of the Edinburgh Festival Fringe. At this point, it would be the weekend before opening, Edinburgh would be a buzz of people putting up posters, people putting up uh, the finishing touches to their venues and getting into final rehearsals. But that's not happening this year. And I bought the book that had all of the uh, front pages of the Fringe of the last 20 years. I also gave some money over to Summer Hall in order to help it to continue to survive. It's going to be a tough time for the arts and I saw Vanessa Redgrave uh, talking through a megaphone in a protest on the news last night 
it, it's going to be tough. It's going to be very, very tough to see the arts coming back stronger than ever, particularly since the largest arts festival in the world, due to start at this point, is no longer there to be a showcase for many, many artists the world over. Now, I, I love and hate the Edinburgh Festival Fringe because it, to me, has too much in it that is not quite of the quality that I would have hoped for. And you can get caught in a bubble. You can spend your time doing a lot of work, finding that diamond in the rough when there's such a huge amount of rough. Um, and that does uh, temper your enthusiasm at times. But what I do know is that it is an amazing contribution not just to the arts in Scotland but to the world but also an economic contribution which has now been lost to the city of Edinburgh and its environs. But we have to look forward indeed as we do look forward not just to the re-establishment of what our heritage may be but also to what's coming next as we come out of lockdown. Now I'm out because we don't have the same lockdown as we had before and at work we are going to go back out and work in houses and work with our children educate them it's only a week or so away from the schools going back in scotland after their summer holidays doesn't feel like a summer doesn't feel like summer holidays but in the shadow of the largest terracotta fountain in the world in the shadow of the people's palace in glasgow green in glasgow as i look towards an industrial part of the heritage of this great city. I will see you next week for more thoughts and updates.